Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Grissom Knife and Tool Riverstone designed by Frank Grissom. Uh, you can actually, this, this particular one is the uh, Urban EDC Supply exclusive version of it um, with the blue anodization. You can, uh, I'll find, I'll, I'll link that right down below. Um, but you can get these actually, this particular knife, not the exclusive version, you can get them in a wide variety of places. So I'll make sure that there are plenty of links so that you guys can get the one that you want. Uh, thank you so much to Urban EDC Supply for uh, uh, basically sending this in for review. This was supplied by Urban EDC Supply, so I really appreciate that. And thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. It's not a big knife. Overall length coming in at about six and a half inches. If you go all the way to that little guy back there, uh, about six and a half inches. Blade length, I mean, if we're gonna measure it to right about here, <laughs> I mean, it, it's weird. In some places, the blade is like 2.75 inches. I think that's probably where I would measure it. If you're gonna measure it all the way up here to the tip, you know, you could call it two and a half inches. But the cutting edge is also two and a half inches, right? It's because of that slope right there, it's a little difficult. I'm gonna say you might wanna be careful because it could be measured technically at, a, at three inches. Uh, if you measure right off the pivot, it's about 2.75. So there you go. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the overall, I'm sorry, <laughs> the overall, <laughs> up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Rat Model 2. You can see here, this is a short, tall, kind of fat, chunky knife, kind of, but it's also not chunky in like a there's too much presence kind of way, right? It is absolutely shorter than both the Rat 1 and Rat 2. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? You can see here once again, absolutely shorter than both. Uh, and then finally, uh, the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. It's even smaller. Uh, did I say rat? What is wrong with me? The Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, is the knife up top, and the Mini Griptilian is the knife down below. Sorry. You can actually see that uh, the cutting edge is even shorter than the uh, than the uh, Griptilian here, the Mini Grip, um, and uh, the overall length is also shorter. Actually, even the room that you have to grab onto the knife, the ergonomic lines, uh, or the ergonomic room, the ergonomic... Um, real estate is shorter than even the uh, mini grip. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spider Pair 3. These are titanium scales, but they are contoured. So you can see here, it looks like they're gonna be exactly the same thickness. It's just slightly thicker, just slightly thicker, including the contouring. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? You can see here, uh, not a long, you know, not a super long knife. It does have a flipper tab, but there's this nice area cut out right here. So the, the flipper tab's not super prominent. Um, so it's uh, nowhere near as long uh, as either the PM2 or Pair 3. And uh, even though it is a fairly tall blade, it's still not quite as tall as the PM2 or Pair 3 because of that hump there. So there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this guy. So these are, like I said, titanium scales. You can get my flashlight down in the description. You can see here, yeah, there's uh, a fair bit of milling on the inside of this for weight reduction. So that's nice. Um, let's go ahead and before we weigh it, I'll get a measurement of blade stock thickness if I can find my calipers. Oh, there they are. Uh, I think uh, the blade's not thick, but I, I don't think it's a super thin blade stock either. Uh, blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at about 135,000. So that's pretty middle of the road. Um, let's go ahead and do, before I forget, let's do the hardware check. You can absolutely get my tools right down below. Just look for the section about my Amazon store with all my tools that I use on this channel. Um, these are extremely recommendable and very inexpensive. T8 is what I'm going to guess. Yeah, T8. We have T8 on the lock bar, or I'm sorry, the lock bar insert screw. Uh, body screws are also T8. Pocket clip screws are, surprisingly, also T8. Everything on this knife is T8, and it's a simple frame lock. So that's great. Minimal hardware, going to be easy to take apart. No issues with that whatsoever. Weight on this guy. Small knife, titanium. Um, 
Okay, it's ready to go. I'm gonna guess th four ounces. Okay, I was pretty close, 4.16 ounces. Definitely gonna be too heavy for some people. People who are big into ratios aren't gonna like that. For me, it's an object that weighs 4.16 ounces that's not super long or super tall, so I don't really care. Do with that information what you will. This isn't a knife that I would carry in athletic shorts, but in most other circumstances, save super fitted khakis, it's probably gonna be okay. So, um, this knife is not manufactured in the United States. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that. Um, I'm not sure exactly who the OEM is. They did a pretty good job though. We've got nice contoured um, titanium. We've got a nice pivot collar that's matching the backspacer, which is sort of a matte blue, right? I also like the um, show side of the pivot. This The knife looks good. Uh, it's, it's a good looking knife. And in the open position, it also looks good. I it kept I was like where have I seen this before? Why does this look so familiar? A lot of similarities between this and the discontinued ZT0456 that was designed by Dmitry Sinkovich. Now there are some differences this area in here is a little different. The o, uh, 0456 did not have the opening hole here. It had a different pocket clip, right? But yeah, a lot of similarities. This guy's also smaller. I don't necessarily think this knife is ripping off uh, another knife, but if you're wondering, you know, why does that look familiar? It's probably because it looks very similar to the 0456. The 0456 was much larger. It was also made in the United States. <laughs> um, so this knife, uh, these are numbered. Uh, this one is number 49 of 102. Blade steel on this guy is M390, so that's nice. We are looking at absolutely premium materials. There are a few different variations of this knife that you can get. If you go to Urban EDC Supply, you'll notice that they're a little bit more expensive. And I'm going to guess that's because the ones they offer all have the... Uh, there's additional anodizing. Um, so you're basically going to pay $50 more for the additional anodizing. The ones that I'm finding on Blade HQ are more, you know, kind of just simple, straightforward, and they're about 50 bucks less, right? So, you know, if you're really into the colors or the contrasts, right, if you want some, if you want it to be a little bit more busy, it might be worth it to you, but there you go. Ergonomics on this guy. I gotta be honest, not super great. Number one, I'm never a fan of knives that I can't get a true four finger purchase on, um, especially ones that have, you know, this is, there's a lot of, there's a lot more presence in this knife for it being such a small knife, it kind of gives me, but it's the same kind of thing that I deal with with, uh, as a Hinderer fan, let me say this, the Hinderer Half Track. I think it's really cool. The reason I don't own one is because I can't get a full grip on the guy. It's too it's too short for me. I don't like it. It's too much knife for not enough ergonomic purchase, right? If I want it some if I want something that small, I'll just I'll just put a Victorinox cadet in my back pocket. But my dedicated knife, I want a full purchase on. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that all knives that don't have uh, you know, that don't give you the ability to grip it with four fingers, like truly, because it's sliding off the edge here, that they're bad. It's just, I, I don't like that as much. On top of that, you don't have a lot of room. So if you're going to do that, a pocket clip like this, that looks nice, I'll hand it to them. You know, it's, it's interesting how they've done the 3D milling on this guy. It's a nice looking clip and it goes with the design. It's also interesting how they have this little ramp here with the jimping on it, because you really, when you go to pull it from your pocket, you got a nice little lock-in position right there. It's going to come out. It's neat. I can see why they did that. But it's kind of a disaster ergonomically. You have a clip that is um, passing the 60% the mark as far as the length of the handle, right? You can absolutely feel the clip. It is not comfortable. It is very angular. Uh, I think especially on a shorter knife like this, we needed a much shorter clip. Like literally something like this would have been fine. Um, and it wouldn't be digging into this bill right here. While it is knocked down, it's definitely digging into your fingers. So that's something that you're going to notice. Um, I'm nicely knocked in, locked in here. Uh, index finger is fine. Where I can put my thumb is fine. But basically beyond that point, it's really just like holding on to a bunch of, I don't know, like kind of wadded up tin foil. It's just not super duper comfortable. You'll adapt to it, as is the case with all things, and this also isn't a knife that I, while it's probably plenty capable, it's not a knife that I'm going to take out and want to do a lot of heavy-duty work with. It's a knife that I, you know, would probably just carry, it kind of got a little bit of fidget factor to it, right? It's a flipper running on bearings, and just open some packages here or there, right? So ergonomics, 
Not great. Uh, truthfully, not not super great. I do like how they've done the backspacer here. I think this is nice how it kind of cuts out. You can see from the front, you get to see the pivot collar. If you get one of the anodized versions of the pivot collar and you get the backspacer, I think it looks pretty cool. Edges are all nicely knocked down and the contouring looks great. Um, here's another thing. Um, I think for the price, which we're going to talk about later, uh, we needed to have a lot more going on with the handle scale. Some, some people like a planar look, but I think there needs to be more going on. Inlays, some micro milling, some interesting milling patterns, right? Something there to give a little bit more. To me, the pocket clip's neat, right? Obviously, some more thought went into how that looks. The backspacer design is neat, but uh, we got a lot of uh, people out there in this price range, right, making knives all over the place that are doing more, that are they're putting more into the knife, more work is going into the knife, uh, more interesting detail, and they're charging the same or less in many, many cases. So, um, well, if you really like the look of this, that's fine, but if they're going to ask what they're going to ask for this, I, I think there should be more, right? And again, this isn't made in the United States. So uh, it has a flipper tab that absolutely works. I like it. You can light switch it. You can push button it. Um, it's fine. Bracing position when you go to brace your finger on the pocket clip, you're probably going to notice it a little bit, but it's okay. Detent's fine. The action is snappy. But on the way back down, it's mediocre. Um, this There are uh, a lot of companies making knives in the same price point, right? I'll give you an example. While I don't necessarily think that perfectly false shut action is a, a, an absolute indication of higher quality in every single circumstance, uh, this is the Riot made Chavez 229 that has absolutely perfect action. Absolutely perfect. And is in the same or slightly, a uh, slightly smaller price point. It's also a limited knife that you can't really get all the time, right? This is okay. Right? This kind of feels the, the action coming out. It's great, but this feels 2014 to 2016 to me. That's kind of what it feels like. So it's all right. You can see there I actually tried to put some nano oil in there to make it better, and it, it helped a little bit. Um, maybe taking it apart, cleaning it up would help a little bit more, um, but it, it's just it's mediocre as it is. They have this opening hole here, which I thought, oh, great. Oh, I can do the reverse flick, right? Not really. You can If you mess with it for a sec, hang on. I'm getting stuck on the lock bar. There, kind of. It's not in a great spot. And it's, you know, how this line came up here. They wanted to keep it looking good with that line, right? And the positioning of it, they wanted it centered here on the flat. The problem is, is where that falls, it's very inaccessible, right? So it's like either you, you need, we need to make this cut out larger. And honestly, I think we need to make the flat, if we're going to do that, the flat probably needs to be more prominent, so there's more room for a larger hole, and then this area needs to be cut out a little bit more. Um, so you've actually got access to that, because what are people gonna wanna do with something like this? They're gonna wanna fidget with it. They're gonna wanna do the reverse flick, and they're gonna wanna do the spidey drop, and they're gonna wanna do the thumb thing. You can't really do that, right? So I don't like holes that are just there for aesthetics. Uh, they need to be functional. Um, so while it does look nice, it's just kind of, it's just kind of ends up being irritating that you can't really access it, right? Something that is easily accessible is the lock bar cutout. They've got a nice little scallop cut right there and it's nice and soft. Same thing on the other side. It's very easy to engage and disengage. I'll give it that. Um, flipping action, you know, like if you want to just sit here and fidget with it, you can do it all day. It's easy. It's not going to hurt your fingers or anything like that. So it's fine. Um, I do like, sorry, I'm getting my fingerprints. These are oil marks too from me constantly wiping the blade off. The tumbling on the blade is a little bit darker, but it does look nice and it's consistent. The edge is also done very well uh, and it's very thin. This is a nice sharp edge, a nice thin edge, and it's also got a really great blade shape for EDC. I love these blade shapes because the nose, right, kind of points down. You can do your draw cuts. Blades like these for EDC, I found them to be quite a bit more, quite a bit uh, more preferable than your drop point blades, right? It's just the curvature of the blade, I mean, a pair of three, something I carry all the time. It's not always ideal for me because I'm doing more draw cut style blades or getting into packages than, than anything else, right? So for me, I really like these, right? Your mileage may vary, but uh, the blade shape is great. That's probably the best part about this knife and the thinness behind the edge is awesome. 
Um, it's also going to be a pretty durable blade shape as well because of how it's angled down here at the tip, right? So there's plenty of material out here. I still wouldn't go prying around with it, but yeah, it's good. I like it. Uh, moving on here, let's see. Uh, fit and finish all the way around is fantastic. It's perfect. It's what I expect from a Chinese OEM in, at this price point. The fit and finish is good. It's just some, you know, quality of the action is the one thing that's, I guess, in that department that's kind of meh. It's okay. It'll work, right? Backspacer looks good. Uh, it says Grissom right there, which is fine. That's a nice place to uh, put your logo sometimes if it's not super like blah. Everything's kept off of the blade, so you get to enjoy the aesthetic of the blade, which I think looks really nice without having to see the Maker logo, so it's cool. There is a lanyard loop thing that is not being prioritized over the clip, so that's fine. I really don't have a problem with the positioning of that. Uh, the pocket clip is in a medium depth carry considering the overall length of the knife and how much of the knife is going to be in your pocket it's about medium and it's fine i don't have a problem with that there is actually a nice bill so this knife in and out of the pocket is a breeze it's really a breeze thanks to this guy so that's nice i just the position of the clip makes for a an incredible hot spot <laughs> when you're holding this knife i don't think it would be as big of a deal if they made a larger one if this knife had the exact same size clip and it was like this, like a larger, you know, increase the size by 25 to 35 percent. I don't think the clip would be nearly as much of a problem. But on a short knife like this, it definitely is. There is a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. Centering is absolutely perfect on this knife, and the lockup percentage is something like 25 to 30 percent with no blade play up down left or right so that's great there is also uh, is there a teeny tiny little bit teeny weeny tiny bit of shouldering underneath there you can see that divot right there where it's actually contacting the stop pin that's fine so pocket clip is major hot spot uh major major hot spot um, the, uh, flipping action is okay. It, it's fine. It's just mediocre from what, for what I expect in this, at this price point, it doesn't have to be drop shut, but it feels tight and slightly not gritty gritty, but just like, it's like that. It feels like 2014 is what it feels like. 2014 to 2017. Um, in this, you know, in, in a lesser price point, to be honest with you. Um, I think that the design is interesting, but I think we need more going on here for what they want for it. I think we need, I would have been really cool to see some, some type of milling pattern, right? Or if it just partially, or if they just did it like on the inside and let the scales shadow box the design. I think that would have been really cool to add some additional, um, contrasting anodization to, to help, you know, between the pivot collar and the backspace from the versions that are anodized. We did a pattern in here and then maybe anodized part of it. That would have, that would have really driven that home a little bit better for me. Right? Small knife, not super comfortable. Even without the clip being a huge hotspot, it, it really is not a super comfortable knife. Those are my big complaints there. The biggest complaint is definitely going to be the price. Uh, this version that you're looking at right here at Urban EDC Supply is $400. Mm, we're not quite looking at James Brand level of overpricing here. I'm not going to go that far, right? The ones on uh, Blade HQ that have less going on, right? So they're basically just not anodized. Those are 350 Those are closer, but truthfully, this feels more like a, you know... Versus the competition that, that's out there. Remember, Zero Tolerance is making knives with the same materials out of the USA. Whether people love the designs or not is another another story, right? But let's take the 0308, for example. That's G10, titanium, and 20 CV for $308. And a lot of people are like, wow, why is it so expensive? And it's US made. This guy, the least expensive version of it, yeah, it's full titanium, but the least expensive version of it is 350 bucks, and they want 400 for this. No. Truthfully, this feels pretty similar to what I expect from Wee Knives for about 250 to $275. Um, and that might sound really harsh. Uh, you know, but if there was more going on, 
like you know as far as like the price of it it's not it's not like you know I, me, like me personally i'm more likely to pay more for a, a knife with a better pocket clip design that's more comfortable in the hand but do can i still understand how they got there sometimes if there's enough like detail and complexity in the design yeah but we're not looking at anything crazy we're looking at m390 and titanium sandwich construction with a backspacer 3d milled clip Lots of that out there for 250 to 275 bucks. Lots of that out there, right? 300 max, but that still feels a little bit high, right? Um, so no, um, for $400 and abs, I don't understand that at all. 350 feels crazy. 300, I'd be like, it's a little high. This feels like a $275 knife. Um, and you know, I, I've been getting a little bit more harsh lately, um, with, with these knife reviews. And I'll tell you this, this is a cool knife. And again, fit and finish is there. The blade is awesome. The blade profile is awesome. It's nice and thin behind the edge. The action is snappy and perhaps the action will get smooth over time, which is usually the case. Anybody who owns a Spyderco Shaman knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's usually the case with a lot of knives, right? Um, there are elements of this that I do appreciate that I think are really cool. I do appreciate they went out of their way to do something interesting with the clip and the backspacer. It's nice, right? Um, what would it take to get me to pay? I'm not going to say 400 is just like, what the heck, you know, but 350, we needed more going on here, more complexity here. This area should be opened up. I want access to this opening hole. Definitely a shorter clip. If it's going to be this small, honestly, I just prefer a bigger version of this knife, right? Maybe some different options with some, some more options with finishes, things like that. That would have been cool. Um, in that case, it would have made me feel a little bit more like, wow. And then the action, absolutely. It doesn't have to be fall shut, but I can hear it. I can hear it. The surfaces in there aren't, you know, quite. And, and again, it's like, it doesn't have to be fall shut. It's just. It's not quite as smooth as I expect a knife of this caliber to be, right? I mean, I've experienced knives that are substantially less expensive that have really impressive, really, really impressive action, right? This is on bearings, you know? So it's interesting. And if, you know, if you like how it looks and you're wondering, Metal Complex, listen, I've got the money for it. I like how it looks. I'm just wondering, is it made well? right? Yes, it is. The fit and finish is great. It's what you're going to expect. The detents tuned properly. You're going to find that the action's probably a bit subpar. Uh, but yeah, it is made well. There's a difference between a knife that is put together well, like the care was taken in the assembly and creation of it, and then it can also have some design flaws, right? Just the placement of things. So yeah, it is, you know, the quality's there, but not not for three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars. No, uh, -uh. two two seventy five is where where I think this should be three hundred max. Um, it's just really it's just really too high for me. I do still appreciate uh, Urban EDC Supply sending this in, and like I said, I do have links for this. So if you feel like you know, listen, I got what I wanted from your review complex is fine. You can think what you want, but I'm going to go ahead with it. Then there are links right down below. But listen, guys, no matter who sends the knife, whether I get it for free or not, I'm always going to be honest. I have to be. I, I, you know, the idea of saying something that I don't think is this, it, it, <laughs> it's that, the, just thinking about that makes my mouth taste bad. <laughs> so I do appreciate Urban EDC Supply saying this. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and, uh, also, um, uh, to, uh, Mr. Grissom, I do think that this is cool and has, uh, some, this is just a review. I don't make knives. It's just one, one reviewer's opinion, right? I'm trying not to take myself too seriously. I would very much like to see an evolution of this. Uh, I don't, you know, no part of me wants to just be damning with this review. No, I would like to see an evolution. I think it would be neat to have a larger one. Uh, and to have some some extra details in there, and to have some changes with the clip, right? But don't need to take don't don't need to uh, you know take what I say as absolute. It's just my opinion. Anyways, 
please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.